Hey guys, it's Rose from Yoga for All with Rose. Today I'm bringing you a full yoga class, um, a full one hour yoga class that focuses on opening the front of the hip and uh, hopefully releasing tension in our iliopsoas muscle complex. Um, I will be using a block today. It's kind of an important part of it, although we use it very little. So have it available. Um, I have my new wonderful sturdy cord blocks. I invite you to use um, anything you have available in your house. I recommend a hardcover book, um, maybe even an encyclopedia or good old dictionary that is real thick. Um, we will be standing on the block to do some releasing later on. So it has to be something you feel comfortable um, um, that you won't fall off. Today's practice is geared towards more experienced and when I say that more into intermediate um, movers. So um, we do some things where I'm not explaining how to get to that pose. So I just invite you to be mindful of that. All right, let's get going. We're going to start on our backs, laying down. And um, just to let you know, this is a little bit slower class, I hope, than what I normally do. We start on the floor, we come up for a brief moment, and then we find our way again to the floor. Um, and as always, we will end our practice in laying down on the mat in peaceful stillness and quietness for a Shavasana, which is, some, some say, and I agree with that, the most important pose of this practice where it all integrates in your body and your mind and your energetic um, body as well. So let's get started. Have your block close by or book, if that's um, what you have available. And let's lay down on our backs and let's find constructed rest. So bending my knees, your feet can be hip width apart or if you wish a little wider. Um, now let your knees fall toward each other. That releases our lower back a little bit. And first things first, we are just going to place our hands gently on our ribs. Turn your gaze inwards, maybe you even close your eyes and start filling your lungs with fresh air. Feeling the rib cage expand under your hands. Exhaling. Maybe we take one exaggerated inhale and one exaggerated exhale through your mouth, sighing anything away that doesn't serve you in this moment. And keep paying attention to your inhale, maybe extending it briefly and keeping the exhale as long as your inhale feeling the movement under your hands. After your next exhale, gently extend your arms along your body. We're going to inhale, bring the uh, hands toward the sky, arms long, and I'm going to exhale and I'm just going to place my arms overhead, relaxing them. So I like to have the backs of my hands on the floor, just experiencing this shoulder opener. Let me move my block so maybe you can see me a little bit better. No need to have straight arms. Let there be a little bit of a bend in your elbows. And now think about the feeling you had in your rib cage when you were breathing. Now replicate that with your arms overhead creating space. Two more deep breaths right here. 
allowing the chest to open, allowing everything melt to the floor. And now this time, exhale and bring your arms back overhead and place them down by your body. Now we're going to do a little bit of bridge poses. So make sure that your feet are, your heels and feet are hip width apart. Feet are parallel to the sides, the long edges of your mat. And here, it might feel good to have your hands on your hips first, but we're just going to gently roll the pelvis up, lifting it up, feeling the, the, the sensations on the front of the hip, and then gently rolling the pelvis down like a low bridge here. And bring the hands along the body. And now as you inhale, tuck your tail under, roll it up and float your arms overhead. Now here I need to adjust my upper body a little bit because I want to start holding tension there, which is not helping me at all. So I'm really focusing on softening my shoulders, softening my neck and really feeling the back of my head heavy there. Maybe you say no, no, no a couple times and let that back part that connects to the floor be soft and no tension in your neck. And we stay here for one more breath, pushing into those big toes and then gently leave your arms where they are and with your exhale, bring your pelvis down. Inhaling rolling up the spine, I'm sorry, the pelvis, finding the expression of your bridge pose today. Push to that big toe ball mount on both sides. And now as you inhale, bring your arms facing each other, fingers pointing to the ceiling. And then gently roll everything down. Now I'm going to take my block and I'm going to gently place it right under my sacrum, my lower back. So I'm going to be in a supported bridge pose. Here I am finding stability under my pelvis. So make sure that whatever you raise your hips with is something where you feel steady and secure so that you can relax the part that is resting on it. So just feeling here, let's extend our arms overhead again, feeling this slight inversion, letting go of any tension, allowing your body to soften here. Now I'm gonna very gently extend my left foot it could be your right as well, but you see it better from here. And as I do so, my knee doesn't have to extend all the way. I'm reaching my same side hand overhead. And then I bring it back to meet the other, both leg and the arm. Now gently, I kind of have to push into my left foot first, and then I start gliding my right reaching the right arm overhead, creating this little bit of an opening on the front of the hip, and then bring it down. So I'll bring it back, really. Let's do that one more time. Finding length on the left side of your body. Stay connected to the leg that is bent to the foot that is on the floor. Coming in. Right side. Soften your lower back. Soften against the block that you have or the prop that you have. And coming in, bring your arms alongside your body and gently bring one knee, the first side of your knees, towards the chest. Maybe you pull the chest towards you. If it feels inviting to you, you may extend that leg that is supporting the floor. Right now, mine is not going to go straight all the way. Now I'm going to extend the same arm as the leg. And I breathe fully. 
Opening the front of the hip. Bringing the knee to the chest. And now just place that foot down. Bring the hand to your hip. Bend the leg that was extended and let's do the other side, bringing the right knee towards your chest. And maybe you gently pull that knee towards you. And then if it's inviting to you, extending, reaching the heel away from the knee, a gentle two-way pull as far as it's comfortable for you. And then extending the same arm overhead. Resting here, softening. And gently bring your knee down, bend the arm, bend the other foot. And then we're gonna go for the first side. Just gently push your leg towards the ceiling. Feel the femur head sink into the, the back of your pelvis and actively pushing my heel up. Place it down. Find the other side. Actively pushing, pushing the heel up. Feeling the, the, the foot sort of sink into the pelvis. Heavy, long, gorgeous leg. And then coming down. Now I'm gonna gently push into my feet like I was going towards the bridge and I'm gonna remove the block, put it to the side and roll to your back. Maybe do a couple windshield wipers, feeling any sensations in your lower back, feeling any sensations in the whole body. Lovely, okay. Now from here, we're just going to simply stand, um, sit up, and we are going to find our tabletop. So come to your tabletop. I'm going to move my block so it doesn't bother me. And here in my tabletop, I'm just going to start by sort of wagging my tail a little bit. And then we're going to extend. So shoulders under our wrists, knees under our hips. Extend the right leg to the side in the same line as my knee, like an all fours, um, all fours gate pose. So I'm gonna show it to you this way. Um, and here, what we're gonna do is our cat and cow. So inhale to prepare, pushing into the foot on the side, exhale, and round your spine find your cat inhale soften the belly opening the heart exhaling rounding the spine inhaling opening the heart one more time with your breath lingering wherever you wish to linger and inhaling and then find your neutral spine and gently bring your weight towards your knee and just walk up to the kneeling version of your gate pose. Placing one hand on the hip that is extended to the side, reach the other arm overhead, reach it up high with an inhale and exhale. Find that lovely side body stretch reaching fingers away from your pelvis staying there a little bit longer really connecting to your center line let your abdominal wall pull gently in and up to support your spine and then float your arm up and we're going to find a supported side plank so float the arm up Float the leg somewhat parallel to the floor and balancing here. If it's inviting to you, I invite you to bend the knee behind you and maybe get a hold of the foot with your hand. This is a lovely opening for the quad, for the shoulder, for whole right side of the body. Gently letting go, 
finding that supported side plank place the foot down and come up to your gate pose bring your hands to heart center deep breath in and deep breath out lovely all right come back to your, I'm sorry, I forgot that I'm changing, I have changed orientation. Come back to all fours, bring your knee down under you and extend the opposite side to, um, so here we would be, your foot would be out of your mat um, on the floor. Finding the gate pose on all fours, inhaling to prepare, Exhaling, pushing into the hands, really connecting that big toe that is on the floor. Inhaling, softening the belly, opening the heart, not collapsing in the neck. Exhaling, rounding the spine, finding a variation of cat and cow. Inhaling, softening the heart. Appreciating the sensations that you have, respecting those. Exhale one last time. And inhale, open your heart. And then find your neutral spine. Now gently walk your hands a little bit toward your knee and come up to the gate pose. Placing the left hand on my, on my hip, reaching the right arm overhead, inhaling, reaching up, exhaling, finding length on that right side body. Again, connecting to my, my core, my center line, closing the ribs, pulling up the pelvic floor muscles. And one last inhale, and then the exhale floats the arm down and we find our way to our supported side plank. Staying here, or if it's inviting to you, gently bend the knee Get a hold of that foot if that's available for you and enjoy life in this balancing, side opening, front opening, shoulder opening, piece of loveliness. Gently letting go of that foot, finding that supported plank pose, placing the foot down and coming up. Hands on your heart. Find your center line. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Lovely, find your way to your tabletop. Now, um, I'm gonna change, um, and I'm sorry, bring that foot back in. I'm gonna change my orientation so that it's easier for you to see me. Now from your tabletop, please tuck your toes under and gently start bringing your knee towards your nose and then step it towards the space where your right hand was. Finding our low lunge, make sure that you accommodate your, the width of your pelvis, reaching the arms up. Staying here for a moment, I'm not sinking too deeply in, I'm really pulling my, my belly in and then place one hand on your hip. Now this arm over here, I'm gonna inhale and reach it overhead. Bring it down, don't bring it down, bring it back up. Inhale, move it towards the back, exhale. Inhale, bringing it overhead to the back space, exhale, lovely. Now bending, Framing the foot, find your runner's lunge. Shorten your stance so that you're in a parallel pyramid stance. Lift your heel up. Inhale, exhale, gently try to push your heel down, all toes pointing to the top of your mat. Inhale, float the heel up. Exhale, push the heel down. One more time, activating the front of the quads, activating, lifting up the kneecaps, push the heel down, lovely. Bend into your right knee and find your low lunge again, toes tucked under, coming up, 
This time around, I'm going to start making circles with my left arm looking behind me, rolling up, opening to the back, coming up, opening to the back, coming up. Lovely. Frame the foot and from here we're just going to step to our tabletop. Maybe shake, wag, anything that feels good in your spine. Tuck your toes under. Bring the left knee towards your nose and step it, step it, step it in the area where your left hand was. And we're going to come up to a low lunge. I'm really actively pushing into the tops of my um, to, to my big toe, as well as the, the, the toes on the floor, placing left hand on my hip, trying to even the hips, trying to stay connected to my core line. And from there, with my inhale, I bring my hand overhead, exhale back to the top, inhaling, trying to create when we're trying to address the top part of the psoas muscle. And coming down, frame the foot, find your runner's lunge, shorten your stance, parallel feet, find your pyramid. Hips are even. Inhale, lift up your heel. Exhale, gently placing the heel down. Inhale, heel up. Exhale, push the heel down as you lift up your kneecaps. One more time. Inhale, heel up. Exhale, heel down. Bend into your front knee. Find your low lunge again. Note the toes underneath. Breathing the arms up. Keeping the left arm overhead, I'm going to start circling to the right. Coming all the way up circling to the right, coming all the way up, circling to the right, coming all the way up. Lovely, frame the foot and come back to your all fours. Now from your all fours, please find your forearm plank. Placing the forearms on the floor, finding length, in your body just stay here for a moment feeling the engagement in your core feeling the strength within you and then gently lower your knees down the tops of your thighs down your belly down and find your way to a sphinx pose so here my legs are a little bit wider than my hips find where you are comfortable Feeling the tops of the um, tops of the feet on the floor, and from here I'm gonna drop my chin down, and I'm gonna try to do a cat back in my sphinx pose. With an exhale, inhale, come back to your sphinx. Exhale, push into your elbows and see if you can take this a little bit further. Lifting up the pelvis a little bit. Back to your sphinx with an inhale. Exhale, tuck the chin, start rounding your upper body and see if you can push into the tops of your feet and just round there for a moment then release everything down and come to your belly tuck your toes under find your hands under your shoulders plank pose and then find your downward facing dog maybe bending the knees first doing any housekeeping you wish to do in this moment and then we're floating on we're going to bring the right knee towards your nose, shifting your weight forward around its spine. Step the foot through. Okay, now I do need to go. I need to change my orientation so you guys can see me. Here I am. So I just switched. I'm still on the same side, but you can see me better here. 
gently pulling into your right uh, left hand turn your shoulders towards the leg the right leg the right knee and extend your arm to an easy twist breathe reach up look down and place the upper arm to inside your foot turn the back foot and place the heel down now option to stay right here if you have the availability or hold on to your ankle or if not come up to your thigh extending arm overhead a different passage to our extended side angle lovely breathing there reaching the arm overhead push into the front foot and find your warrior two deep breath in and out and then extend the front foot extend the right arm Flip the palm towards you and let you do a reverse warrior this way. Pushing into both feet like a starfish reaching out from your center. Lovely. Come back to your warrior two. Scoop the arm with you. Come back to framing the foot in your runner's lunge. Step to your downward facing dog. Now I'm going to come back to my original orientation and hopefully you can see me. So find your dog and bring your left knee towards your nose as you shift your weight forward towards your hands. Place the foot down. First we're going to find a twist. So turning your shoulders to the left, opening the arm maybe lifting up the gaze if that feels comfortable for you now look down and place both feet in front of your foot turning the all the foot down heel comes down and my toes turned in and my heel is out stay here or come up as you need as you open to the extended side angle that is extra deep breathing really sensing that distal reach connecting to your core and from there push into your left foot find your warrior two deep breath in deep breath out and then we're going to extend that arm overhead keep going as you find an extended reverse warrior come back to your warrior two scoop the arm find your way to low runner's lunge i'm sorry find your way to runner's lunge and step back to your downward facing dog and from here, take a moment to do any housekeeping that your body is asking you to do. And then very gently start shifting your weight from one foot to the other and walking your feet to meet your hands. Be generous with the bend in your legs as we find our way to our first forward fold try to pull your knee i'm sorry your navel in and up and try to place that belly on top of your thighs and just hang maybe you play with shifting the weight to one side and then the other whatever feels inviting to you in this moment then bending your knees generously letting go of the arms if you were holding opposite elbows and then just rolling up one vertebrae at a time head comes up last lovely alrighty friends here we are we are standing up and I'm gonna take my block so 
Uh, I'm trying to decide what is the best order of things to do. But first I want to do a little bit of strengthening before we go to the block. So I'm changing my mind on the go. Here we are. Let me just check that I'm good on my camera. Can you see this real brief? I'll just enter here. Yeah, it looks like I'm great. Sometimes my I can't see myself, so now I can see myself. Stay on your mat if that is great. I'm changing my orientation here a little bit. Here we are. I want to do this variation of dancer's pose that looks a little different. So I'm just going to turn a little bit this way so you can see me better. I'm going to float up my arms as well as my right knee. Stepping back so you can see my whole body. And from here, I'm going to glide my foot behind me, reach my foot as far as it goes. Exhale, bring the knee to the nose and bring the upper body towards the knee. Arms come down to the sides. Inhale, reach up, balance. Exhale, curl everything in. One more time. Inhale, reaching away, extension. Exhale, flexion. Inhale, find your somewhat neutral. Twist your arms, I'm sorry, twist your shoulders towards the left, away from that foot. See if you reach your arm behind you, if you can hold on to that foot. It might be available to you, it might not be. You can also bring your gaze to forward and gently push into that hand, reaching the top hand overhead and gently letting go. Let's do the other side. Reaching left, left knee up, arms come overhead. Stay, stay with your arms, glide it behind you. Get to balance here a little bit. Exhale, rounding the spine, creating a flexion. Inhaling, reaching the arms overhead. Maybe you point the toes, maybe you flex the toes, wherever you are today. Exhaling. And inhaling. One more time. Exhaling. And inhaling. Now from here, I'm gonna twist my, I'm gonna change my orientation, you can see me a little bit better. I'm gonna twist my shoulders to the right. My gaze can stay forward, or it can come with me. And I'm gonna reach my right arm to get a hold of the foot. Stay sideways, or bring your gaze to the front. Whatever you do, reach your arm up as you kick into your foot. And gently bring it down. Do a little bit of wiggling. Lovely. All right, take your block or your prop that is sturdy and keeps you safe. Place it on your mat. Step there with your, which is the left side. So let's step on it, on your left foot. Seeing, seeing this here, we're going to release the psoas muscle by gently parallel feet swinging my leg back and forth. Give you a side view of this. So I'm truly just standing here. I'm balancing, feeling my whole right uh, left foot on the floor. And then I let my toes to drop. And maybe the toes even like kind of sweep there. And I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to focus on my center line. I'm not going to carry any tension. This is super relaxed. It's almost like the weight of the leg is doing it. The momentum keeps it going from one direction to the other. So I'm actually doing next to nothing. Minimum effort, maximum return in this one. 
Every time I bring my leg to the front, it engages my psoas muscle. Every time I bring it behind me, it stretches my psoas muscle. Hmm. And then gently coming to a still. And step off your block. And just take a moment, your feet under you, to notice if there's any changes in what you experienced. I feel like there's lengthening and there's like lightness in the front. I don't know what your sensation is though. Here we are, let's repeat it to the other side. Sturdy prop, stepping on it with your right foot. Really sink into that right foot. That's why we did the balancing first, that we know how to stand on one foot, right? And here we are, maybe you start small. My toes are sort of scraping the floor and I do need to support my center. So I'm pulling my navel in and up gently, closing my ribs and then let that movement take you where it's taking you. Again, minimum effort, maximum return here. So really just letting it come forward and back. Notice how my arms swing a little bit. Are they okay? They also balance me. And I'm still very aware of my pull from my head and my whole energy line goes up. And I'm here swinging a little bit more, reminding myself that there's an activation as I come forward and there's a release when I go towards behind me. No stress on the lower back. That's why we engage the core. And then a couple more moments there, releasing, letting go, let go in your head. And then coming to a stillness, stepping off your block, feet under your hips. Maybe you even close your eyes, take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out, feeling your whole being the beautiful wholeness of us. Opening your eyes if they were closed. Let's put the block to the side. And once again, I'm changing my orientation here. So we will head back to the floor. This was our peak. As interesting, this is a very different exploration class today. So thank you for staying with me. Come to the top of your mat. We're just going to do a half vinyasa to find our way to the floor. So inhale your arms overhead, exhale forward, folding your hips, maybe bending those knees so you can dig a little deeper in. Halfway left with your inhale, exhale, come to all fours. Do a little bit of wagging if that feels good. And here in your pigeon oh i'm here in our all fours i already gave away what we're gonna do we're gonna find a one-legged pigeon so we're gonna start with our right knee bring the right knee towards your left hand so i'm kind of coming in in an angle can you see this and from there like i'm gliding on the floor I'm going to bring it under me. So we kind of have an internal rotation before an external rotation. As I come down, I'm really going to focus on my back foot. Maybe tucking your toes under and then lengthening the toes. Maybe adjusting the back thing. Now pull in your lower belly. If this is too much of a sensation, you can always use your block for this. Okay, placing it under your hip. There's no foul in this one. Yeah. I'm going to stay right here. I'm extending those toes one more time. I'm kind of tucking the toes under and then letting them go long. And our pigeon today is not going to be a sleeping one, sleeping swan from yin, but we're actually going to stay up here. You may come forward wherever you need to be today, but we're trying to find an expression of this pigeon where our upper body is towards the right 
I'm sorry, it's upright. Again, you might see if that back foot and leg needs a little bit of attention. And just breathing here, finding that pigeon. Note that my lower belly is active. Lovely. Let's place our hands in front of us. Push into your hands and find your lizard. So my foot comes to the outside of my hands. Now right here, let's adjust the back again. So I'm lifting up the knee and placing it down again. Maybe the knee glides a little further out. Now I'm gonna take my right arm, reach it forward, reach it up and create a twist for my upper body. So my shoulders turn towards the bent knee. If it is available to you, bend your foot and take a hold of your foot. If not, just keep reaching toward the back space. But note that I'm not pulling up my pelvis to get that foot. Try to sink deep and breathe to this very, very sensation heavy quad stretch with a chest opening. And all sorts of things are happening here. I'm letting go of the tension that doesn't serve me. And then I gently let go of that foot. I place my hand down, pushing into my hands. I'm gonna bring that foot in. Take a breath, take a moment. Your body, your yoga. Okay, other side. Left knee starts gliding towards my right wrist. And from that place, I turn it open to my pigeon. I'm gonna tuck my right toes under, lift that knee up and try to reach the knee a little further behind me. Now I wanna point out to you as we stay here, maybe you find your spider fingers and reach your heart up wherever you can be. Note that my lower leg is not 90 degrees. Sometimes pigeon is taught that way. I think it's safer for our knee joints to have that lower foot closer and having the angle of my knee joint very small. And here we are in our pigeon. Maybe you go back again to that back foot, placing it down, reaching up, engaging that lower belly. Intense stretch in so many ways. Couple more deep breaths here. And then place your hands in front of you, push gently to them and find your lizard, low lizard. Let's inch a little bit forward here. So again, I'm tucking my toes under. Maybe it feels good to lift the knee up and glide it down. Yogi's choice. Find the low lizard. And from here, I'm going to reach my left arm overhead, opening my chest, turning my, my uh, shoulder to the left and reaching my hand behind me. Stay here, or if it's available to you, bend the back uh, knee and bring the foot to your hand. And breathe. Very much letting go of any tension that doesn't serve you in this moment. This is a very intense posture. Accept it, we're not here long tucking my chin slightly so that the back of my head can be long. And then letting go very carefully, very kindly, pushing into my hands and finding my all fours again. Do any housekeeping that feels good. Lovely. All right, friends, we are simply gonna sit down, 
have the block available to you or your prop available for you. And we're gonna lay down on our mats. So just first, find a little Dandasana, reaching the arms overhead, feeling the 90 degrees in your body, and then tuck your tailbone under and start rolling your spine down slowly with the arms and lay down. Very good. Okay, so we're gonna start first by doing our reclined pigeon. A lot of hip openers here and I have the sun in my eyes, that's lovely. So please, I'm going to show this on my left side. I invite you to do your right side if that feels more comfortable for you. Actually, I take it back. I'm going to do my right side as well. So crossing my right ankle over my left knee. And here, just like we did with the quad stretch, I'm not going to grab and reach. I'm going to bring the lower register to my hands. Maybe holding on to the thigh, maybe not. What I invite you to do here is really feel your hips and pelvis heavy on the floor. If this is not enough sensation for you, you might bring the lower leg a little bit further down and reach for that. Well, it's not recommended to hold on to your knee, but to whatever is available for you right there. From here, we're going to do a little bit of a twist. So gently start falling to your left and keeping the figure four, find your right foot to the floor and the side of your right left leg on the floor. Sometimes it feels good to put my hand in my hip crease and gently kind of direct it down. If it's en enjoyable for you, you can open your right arm to a T to the side and maybe open your gaze to the right. So this is a bit of a twist. But addresses a so it addresses different parts than a ah their coats normal supine twist now very gently bring your gaze to the ceiling and start moving your legs back up where you started so figure four now we're gonna do a reclined cow face pose. So I'm stacking my one knee over the other. And if it's available for you, you can hold on to the feet from the outside. I'm holding on to the outside edges of my feet. If it's inviting to you, you can pull the feet away from each other. I guess that's why it's sometimes called a shoelace pose, right? It looks like I have shoelaces in front of me. And then gently let go. Bring your feet on the floor. Take stock. Inhaling. And exhaling. My lovely spring sun is in my face and I let my knees fall from one side to the other just a little bit, not a full windshield wiper, a mini one. And then I'm crossing my left ankle over my right knee, finding the length and softness in my especially upper body. I'm going to float that right knee towards my chest. I am going to hold on to whatever is available to me. I like keeping a flex on the top part the whole time because I know it makes me feel more secure with my knee. Sometimes I have the tendency without thinking to flex both knees, uh, flex both feet. I don't think that's really necessary. It's just a habit of mine. 
And I'm breathing, finding length, feeling the back of my pelvis sink to the floor. And from here, I'm gonna gently start falling with control to the right side and placing my left foot on the floor and the side of my left leg to the floor. Knee sort of points up. Maybe you take a, one hand to your hip crease. Maybe you kind of see how it feels to gently push it down. I'm not sure if that's inviting to you, but I do want to offer that. And also, if you want to open your arm, your left arm to a T, do so, and you can even turn your gaze to the left arm. And here, letting go. Nothing else to do but to hang out in this pose. Letting your breath help you open things that are tight. And then let your inhale bring your gaze toward the ceiling and gently bring your legs back up. From there, I'm stacking my knee one over the other and I find my reclined cow pose pose. Again, check your neck, check your shoulders, check your upper body. And if it feels inviting to you, maybe you pull those feet away from each other. And maybe you don't. It really is your practice and your yoga. Breathing there a couple more moments. And then softening, letting go of the feet, bringing your feet on the floor. Take a moment. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now, friends, I hope you have your block somewhere where you can reach it. And we're going to finish our last hip opener um, stretches. So take your block and place it under your lower back like we did in the very beginning of the class. So finding your supported bridge. And again, before we go anywhere, just find stability and a feeling of not falling anywhere so you can relax your pelvis and your seat on the, on the block. Send your arms overhead again. And just breathe a couple rounds of deep breaths in and out. We're closing our practice and we're finding our way to a deeper, more relaxed feeling, grounding. And with your next inhale, let the air float in your ribs and bring your right knee towards your chest and reach your arms to your right knee. Feel the heaviness of the back of the leg in the bent knee. And now very gently extend the left knee. Reach the left heel as far as possible and then relax that foot. Breathe here deep. Stay on the bent knee with your right hand and now let's extend the left arm overhead as far as it goes. Activate the leg that was on the floor and flex your heel away and reach the heel and the fingers away from each other. Place it back down and soften. 
as you soften, soften the elbow and look to the left. Inhale, reach up high. Exhale, look to the left and soften the elbow. One more time. Inhaling, reaching up, looking at the ceiling. Exhaling, looking to the left. Bring the arm all the way down. Flex the foot and find a two-way pull here. Trying to sink into this hip here and letting this front of the hip open. Again, instinctively, I'm flexing even the top foot as I'm gently trying to pull it closer to my chest. And I meant my um, right foot. Place your right foot down, bend your left leg. And do a little bit of moving side to side on your pelvis and then find stillness. Breath in, breath out. Now we're going to do the left side. So bring your left knee towards your chest. Feel that femur head sinking into the pelvis again and hold on to what is available for you. Flex the right foot and reach that heel away from your body. And then release the right foot and let it soften. Now have your left hand on your left knee and extend the right arm overhead. Flex the right heel and reach the right heel and the right fingers away from each other and then place them back down, softening. I'm going to look to the right and I'm going to bend my right elbow a little bit. And then I come back toward the ceiling. I'm reaching my arm overhead. Melting my, uh, my right elbow, bringing my gaze towards the right. Inhaling, reaching overhead. We have one more here. We're really trying to target the upper, bot of the upper part of the psoas muscle. Looking to the right, bending the elbow and reaching. One last time, look to the right and now keep going with the arm. Bring your gaze to the ceiling, flex the right foot and find that two-way two pull. Right heel towards the floor, I'm sorry, towards the, the space at the end of your mat and knee, left knee coming towards your chest. And then very gently let go of your left knee. And then bend your right knee. We're going to do one final pose before our Shavasana. So do any adjustment with your prop. And then we're just simply going to do a waterfall pose. Adjust the prop so that you feel comfortable on it. I'm still getting used to my new cord cloth. And take a moment there. If it's inviting to you, maybe you roll your ankles a couple times. If it's time for you to start really finding that stillness within, take a moment with that. Explore if you want to extend your arms overhead one more time. Letting that open, the front of the body. Couple more deep breaths here. And then gently bend your knees, placing your feet on the floor, gently, kindly, carefully. Lift your pelvis up and move your block and come to your final resting pose, your Shavasana. 
extending the legs, extending the arms. Maybe you come to your neck, lift up your head a little bit, place it back down. Maybe you push one shoulder down and let it go. Maybe you push the other shoulder down, let it go. Maybe you shake your pelvis a little bit. We did a lot of work in that area. And then just find stillness in this moment. If your mind is still racing, just start paying attention how it feels as the air flows in through your nostrils and how it feels when the air flows out through your nostrils. We're going to rest in this silence and in this stillness for a few moments. Feel your body heavy on the floor. Let the floor cradle you. Let yourself be heavy and allow yourself to let go. As you lay here, I invite you to stay here if you need a little bit more time for this moment. If you feel ready to move on, gently bring a little movement to your fingers, to your toes. Maybe the thumb pad traces your fingers from the base of the finger to the top. Gently roll your head from side to side. And when you feel ready, find your way to one side and pause in your fetal pose. And when you feel ready and stable, let your hands push you up to your seated, your comfortable seated, however that is. Bow your head down, bring your hands to your heart in any way you wish. Take a moment to feel the life in you. Honor yourself for taking this time for this practice. Feel the kindness and compassion in your heart. Thank you for doing this practice with me. It is such a privilege for me. I ask you to let your light shine bright and spread that kind and compassion to the world around you. I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you.